Hi, I'm Damon Little, and I'm the head chef at the Headland Center for the Arts. Um, today's video is going to be about using kitchen twine. So basically cotton string. But it is important to find kitchen twine that is made for kitchen use and not polyester or plastic or something like that. So this is basic um, kitchen twine, cotton string. Um, it comes in a few different thicknesses. This is on the thicker side. And sometimes if I'm tying a roast or a pancetta or something, I'll need to get really, really tight. The thinner string, I need to double it up. Do the same thing just with two strands of string because it, it, it can break. This thick stuff doesn't usually break. I'm kind of a nerd for knots and tying things up. Anyway, as far as like a, a cinching butcher's knot or something like that, um, there's one that at least I have known it to be called a surgeon's knot. Um, and it's the simplest knot for this purpose that there is, I think. Um, and essentially it's just the uh, first stages of tying your shoe. So the first sort of overhand knot that you make, you do that, except for that you run the string around two or three times. And what this allows you to do is cinch down on whatever it is and have the string not um, jump back immediately so that you can finish it with a second knot. So here's a quick demonstration on how to truss up a roast. The first trick is if you put your string into a bowl like that, it won't run away from you when you're working. So you start with the, the um, surgeon's knot tie that off, making sure to leave a bit of string to tie off at the end, and then do um, these little loops uh, that are, I think, sort of a half turn with your hand to create the loop. And this will allow you to cinch down several places along the length of the roast. Once you get to the other side, you can roll the roast over and then you want to measure out the amount of string that you're going to need from there, which is about one and a half lengths of the roast. And then you go back along the back side and just tuck the string under and over. Um, and this is a good opportunity to readjust uh, your strands of strings from the first go round, and also it sort of creates a little more pressure and holds the roast together a little bit more. And then this is the reason that you created a little bit of string at the beginning um, so that you can tie the whole thing off at the end. And this is essentially the same surgeon's knot that you used at the beginning. So a couple twists around and then tie it off with a second knot. So this is that same technique but done f not as a practice, but for real, with a pork loin. So this is actually me just sort of butterflying the roast um, and so that I can add flavoring to it and then roll it back up. I'm scoring the surface now to let some of the spices get a little deeper into the meat. There's salt and rosemary and some fennel seeds and red pepper flakes and garlic and then slices of orange, whole oranges. And now we roll it up. And then the rest will be much like I did with the uh, roll of cloth. Surgeon's knot, the second knot to tie it off, leaving some extra string there. Um, doing several loops down the length of the roast, making sure it's nice and tight, but not, you know, crazy tight. Measuring off the string, loops on the back side and then we'll just go ahead and tie it off again using the surgeon's knot. This next use is just making a bundle of um, herbs, in this case, thyme, uh, just by doing several wraps around and then a double knot to tie it off, nothing special. 
Um, this is good if you're making soup or doing something like boiling potatoes, which I've done here with uh, peppercorns, whole peppercorns, uh, salt, and thyme. And then water, all cold, then brought up to a boil and simmered until the potatoes are tender and done. And what's nice is that um, with thyme you get all these little leaves that fall off and kind of stick to the potatoes. So this next technique is something that I got out of uh, a Jacques Pepin book. It's a classic French way of doing asparagus where you peel the bottom parts of the stem and then wrap it up into a bundle with the kitchen twine, give it another little double knot. Um, and then once you've got enough bundles, you can square them all off to the same length. So you make your bundles with the tops all in line and then cut them all to the same length, and then poach them in uh, salted water. Um, I boil it for about four, four and a half minutes, um, and then pull it out and let it drain, and they're usually just sort of perfectly tender and delicious. This is using the same technique to make essentially a little brush out of uh, fresh rosemary branches. It's also really good for basting meats and other food while they're roasting or grilling. Hello. So, once again, I am Damon Little, head chef at the Headland Center of the Arts, and thank you for joining me for this video. I'll see you next time.